We have seen that by choosing the ratio of the resistances R4 over R3 to equal the ratio of the resistances R2 over R1, uh, provided two particularly nice uh, characteristics of the difference amplifier. The first of them was that the output, V out, then, became a scaled version, R2 over R1, of the actual dis difference, VI1 minus VI2. So by choosing the ratio of these two to equal the ratio of those two, both voltages coming into the amplifier received the same gain, and we got a scaled version of the difference of those two. The second advantage of this configuration was the common mode rejection, that noise that was absorbed by the leads or noise that might exist on both of the leads of the transducer was eliminated through this difference amplifier. We're now interested in the input resistance seen by the transducer. So we have a transducer that's going to be generating a relatively small voltage and feeding then this amplifier. And we're interested in knowing what type of resistance that transducer is going to be experiencing. In other words, we want to find out what is the input resistance seen by the transducer. To accomplish this, we're going to deactivate the modeled um, common mode noise and then realize that or replace the transducer with a voltage source that we'll call VID. And it's referenced plus to minus so that VID is equal to VI2 minus VI1. VI2 minus VI1. That's VID. Now to determine that input resistance, we'll call it R sub ID. We'll define R sub ID to equal the ratio of that differential input voltage VID divided by the current I, lowercase i, in. Now, the current in this form, you'll notice that the current going through this resistor is the same as the current flowing in this path. And so we can write a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation around this loop to determine the input resistance. So starting here, we go minus to plus, that'll be a negative V sub I D. Coming on along here, we're calling this I in. We've already pointed out that that's the same current flowing through this entire branch. So we have the negative VID plus R1 times I in. Brings us to this point here. Now we've got the virtual short across here, so we're going to just say plus zero going across there. Continue on around the loop in the direction of current flow gives us another plus R1 I in brings us back to where we started, and some of the sum, so the sum of those terms must equal zero. Bringing VID to the other side is a positive, and combining these two R1 I ins, we have two R1 R1 I in equals VID. Or finally, then, we can form the ratio of those two and give us the input resistance. It's equal to VI D divided by I in, which is just equal to 2 times R1. So the resistance that the transducer sees looking into this difference amplifier is equal to 2 times this resistance value there. Now this introduces a, a conflict in design criteria. On the one hand, we're wanting to get some gain out of this amplifier, which we know is equal to R2 over R1. So to get more gain, ideally, would have R1 be relatively small. But we also note now that the resistance, the input resistance that the transducer sees is equal to 2 times R1. And ideally, we would like the input resistance to be relatively large. 
So there's a conflict in the two design criteria. To get gain, we want R1 to be small, but to prevent loading of the transducer by the amplifier, we want R1 to be big. This is admittedly a weakness of this standalone difference amplifier that we'll address with modifications to this amplifier to create what is known as the instrumentation amplifier. But for now, the take-home message is that the input to the difference amplifier is simply equal to two times the R1 value.